Hi everyone, Miss Peters here. Uh, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. And this first lesson is going to be on scientific notation. Uh, now before I get going into that, just to make sure that you are aware, um, and this is very basic, but you are able to pause this video at any point and rewind if you miss something. So feel free to do so if that's you um, and you need to go back for some reason. So again, uh, this is on scientific notation, which I know that you know this, um, but it's been a while and it is important for sciences because we don't want to write really large or small numbers. Now we're not just being lazy in doing that. Um, it just takes more time and when you're working a problem it, it's just easier to work with scientific notation once you know how. So again we're just going to start basic what is scientific notation? A way to represent small and large numbers. So for example if I have a number um, that looks like this I may not want to write all of those zeros. So the, a way that I can write scientific notation, scientific notation always has one digit and then the decimal place. So we want to put the decimal place here. So this is going to become 2.35 times 10 to some power. Now right now the decimal place is back here. So we would count how many places, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is 10 to the 7th. Um, sometimes people get confused as to whether you should have a positive or negative exponent. One way that I remember it is that the positive exponents correlate to very large numbers. So this is a number that's larger than 1, which means that my exponent should be positive. A number smaller than 1 would have a negative exponent. So just to show you an example of that, If I had this number, I would want the decimal place to go right here. And if we count this out, that's one, two, so one place, two place, three place, four place, five places. This becomes 3.51 times 10 to the negative 5. Um, so again, this is a number that's smaller than 1. It has a negative exponent. Uh, I personally get confused with all the, if you move it left, if you move it right, but if those help you, uh, feel free to use that. I just remember that negative exponents are smaller than one, positive exponents larger than one. Um, so that's just what scientific notation is. But what you guys probably really need is how to operate with scientific notation. So before we get into all the prefixes that you need to know, uh, I just want to do some math things that you may or may not have seen, some of the exponent rules. If I were to take two numbers, 2.35 times 10 to the 5th, and I want to multiply this by 1.76 times 10 to the 3rd. What I'm going to do is take these two numbers and multiply them. And that gets you the number 4.136. And then, if I'm dealing with the exponents, when I have 10 to the 5th times 10 to the 3rd, what happens when you multiply things of the same base, so the base here is 10, is that you add the exponents. So this would be times 10 to the 8th. Uh, now, I realize that you can use your calculator for this. Uh, but you should have an awareness to estimate that if I'm multiplying two numbers that have these powers of 10, that by adding the powers together, that's going to be about what your answer should look like. Now, say you wanted to do the same operation on your calculator. Um, there are a couple ways that you can do that, one of which is to type it exactly as I have here. Now, notice that I have parentheses. Uh, it's usually not that important with two numbers like this, but I'm promising you that you're going to want to get in the habit of using parentheses. So I would type this as I have shown with parentheses. Parentheses 2.35 times 10 to the power 5, close that parenthesis, 
and then multiply by this if you're using the TI-83 or 84. Now, if you don't want to type all these times 10 to the power, there is another way around it. On your TI-83 or 84, you're going to see a button. Uh, it's actually the comma button. And above it, you'll see EE -E in blue and J in green. So if you wanted to type this in your calculator in your uh, TI-83 or 84, now be careful because on tests I often will not allow these, but you can do 2.35 and then you're going to use this EE. -E. So you're going to want to hit the second button and then whatever power you have. So here this power is 5. So, um, sorry, before you hit 5. You do second and then that comma button because it has EE -E above it. And then you're going to type 5. So you'll get 2.35E5. And then you would multiply by 1.76. Again, use that second button to get that E. It's called E notation. Um, and then that's the third power. So you'll get the same answer if you do it that way. Um, that button does exist on other calculators besides the TI-83 and 84. If you're using the TI-30, which is what you'll have to use for tests, you'll see that same button. Um, you'll see a thing that looks like this, x to negative 1. And right above that button, you'll see EE. -E. So on the TI-30, you'll want to hit the second button and then this button to get the power. Uh, so that's another way that you can do that. And you do have parentheses on that calculator as well. So now we've, we've discussed how to multiply these. You can use your calculators, that's okay. But you should have an awareness that by multiplying these powers, you're adding the exponents on the 10. What happens when you divide? So if I take the similar numbers, 2.35 times 10 to the 7th, and I want to divide by 1.3 times 10 to the 3rd. Uh, just as the last time, we're going to take these two numbers and divide them. And you get 1.8. Uh, we'll talk about sig figs in a second, but I'm just going to say 1.81. And then with these, when we divide, we're going to subtract the exponents. So this would be times 10. 7 minus 3 is 4. Uh, you can get the same answer using your calculators, but here's where you really, really, really need parentheses. If you do not do parentheses, your calculator will not type this out correctly. So if you're putting this in your calculator, you must type out parentheses 2.35 times 10 to the 7th, close that parentheses, then divide by the denominator. If you do not use parentheses here, what will happen is instead of your calculator doing this number divided by this number, it will do 2.35 times 10 to the 7th, divided by 1.3. So in other words, it does this. And then instead of dividing by 10 to the third, because it's in the denominator, it will actually multiply by 10 to the third. So be very careful with division and using parentheses. Uh, I want to say that when you use the E notation, though, that doesn't become necessary. But make sure you should get the same answer. So when you divide, the rule is that you subtract your exponents. Be very careful too if you have a negative exponent. So let's just extend this example. If this was 2.35 times 10 to the 7th divided by 1.3 times 10 to the negative third. So now I have a negative exponent in the denominator. This would be 1.81. Again, those two numbers divided. And then think about what is 7, 
subtracting this exponent. So you're really doing 7 minus, and that exponent is negative 3. Well, minus a negative is adding, so this is actually 10 to the 10th. So just be careful with negative exponents in the denominator. Okay, so now let's talk about prefixes that you need to know. And this is something that you should recognize, but you may not remember all of them. You may want to make some flashcards for these if you're a flashcard person. I won't make you make flashcards. Let's see. You should have a chart like this that was given to you in class. Um, maybe you didn't get it today, but you will get it. If you're to look at this chart, there's a lot more information than you actually need. Uh, I wanted you to have this because I thought this was a very good resource. But let's talk about the ones that you need to know. So you should know that these yada, zeta, exa, peta exist. But we're not really going to deal with some of those exponents. Or if we do, you can look it up in your chart. The ones that you need to know are from 10 to the 12th to 10 to the negative 12th. So with the exception of, I mean, some of you know hecto and deca, but to be honest, I don't really care about those. I don't really use them. I, they don't really get used very much. So you need to know tera through kilo and deci through pico. And the reason, another reason why I wanted to give you this chart is because here you can see this E notation for your calculator. Uh, you see the scientific notation as well as the exponents. Um, one way that I remember this, you should recognize a lot of these, but let's talk about tera, giga, and mega real quick. Um, if you're into computers, you should recognize megabyte. Actually, is that capitalized? I think it might be. Gigabyte and terabyte. So what that means is a megabyte is oops, a megabyte is a million bytes. Uh, so that might be a way to remember that mega is uh, 10 to the 6, if you remember that million looks like this. So megabyte is a million bytes. A gigabyte is a billion bytes. A terabyte is a trillion bytes. Uh, and if you've studied anything about computers, a byte is basically a unit of data. Uh, it actually can be broken up into bits after that. So that's one way that you can remember at least the order of them. So if you know computers at all, you know a gigabyte is bigger than a megabyte. You know a terabyte is bigger than a gigabyte. That might help you remember the order. Um, for a lot of these, I remember that they're by threes, with the exception of deci and centi. So 10 to the third, 10 to the sixth, 10 to the ninth, 10 to the twelfth, 10 to the negative third, 10 to the negative sixth, 10 to the negative ninth, 10 to the negative twelfth. You can remember the order of the prefixes and then match them up. So like I said, I remember these top three in order based on computer stuff. Uh, a kilometer, kilo, hopefully you remember that's a thousand or ten to the third. Um, deci, uh, decimals are called decimals because they're base ten and so this is dividing by a tenth or ten to the negative one. Centi, the way that I would remember that is that there are a hundred cents in a dollar. So that's why centi is basically one one hundredth. Or if you look at this, this looks like a penny. Uh, milli, that one's a little strange. Sometimes people think that's dividing by a million, but it's dividing by a thousand. Um, nano, I know I skipped micro. Nano, I remember because nano sounds like nine. So 10 to the negative ninth is nano. And pico just sounds really small, so I just remember that's the smallest one. 
Now micro, uh, this prefix, if you notice, is a bit different than the other prefixes. The way that you write this, to me, it it's the Greek letter mu, but it, you can either think of it as an M or a cursive U. Uh, that's what the micro, if you were to write it out, I know it doesn't look like that typed, but that's what micro looks like. So again, you want to memorize these matching the exponents with the prefixes. So now let's actually use them. Hopefully you have this in front of you. I'm going to get rid of that now. If I wanted to represent two thousand, uh, let's just keep it simple, meters. So the scientific unit for a meter is the letter M. So this is the unit we're going to use with the prefix. Now, if I were to put this in scientific notation, the closest power is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is 2 times 10 to the 6 meters. Instead of writing it as 2 times 10 to the 6 meters, I could look up, well, what is 10 to the 6? Hopefully you know that. 10 to the 6 is mega. So I would write this, instead of writing 10 to the 6, I'm going to replace that with the prefix. The prefix for mega is a capital M. So this is going to become 2 mega meters. And this is an unusual unit. You don't usually see a mega meter. But the capital M represents the prefix mega. The M represents the unit meters. So the first letter is always the prefix. Second letter is your unit. Uh, another thing to note, all of these, not all, but most of the big ones, so mega, giga, tera, they're all capital letters. After kilo, they're all capital letters. Uh, so if you see really large prefixes, they should be capital. Okay, what if one doesn't come out quite so evenly? So let's say that we have this number. And now I'll say that this is bytes. So for a computer. I have 23 million bytes. I could write this as 2.3 times 10 to the 7th bytes. So I move the decimal over so that it was here. Now 10 to the 7th doesn't have a prefix. But it's close to 10 to the 6th. So what I can do is say that this is really... 2.3 times 10 times 10 to the 6. You don't have to write it like this, but I'm, for some people this may have. So 10 to the 7th is 10 times 10 to the 6. Now 10 to the 6, we just said was mega. So this is 2.3 times 10 mega bytes. Well, 2.3 times 10, we can just rewrite as 23. 23 megabytes. Uh, so you may have to estimate what you're near. Another way to get to this number is uh, if you take one away from here, you have to move the decimal to the right one. In other words, if you're making this number smaller, so by making this 10 to the 6, I removed a place from here, so I have to add it here. So this is really 23 times 10 to the 6. And then that gets you directly there. Okay, so now let's talk about conversions, converting between different prefixes. And this is something that a lot of students will struggle with. Um, and it's necessary because of the fact that a lot of the equations that we're going to be using in physics if you have a prefix like kilo, mega, tera, centa, it's not going to work in your equation. Your equations are going to need your standard SI units. So let's talk about SI unit for a second. 
your SI unit for time, in other words, the scientific unit for time is a second. Your SI unit for length is a meter. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, we'll get to the other ones later, but these are the most common ones that we're going to see with kinematics or motion, uh, meters and seconds. If something is not in meters or seconds, then you're going to have to put it into meters or seconds before you can use the equation that you're given. So let's say that you're given a number that looks like this. 0. Point, actually, let me make this 0. 8.1 times 10 to the negative 2 seconds. What you're going to have to do is convert this back. So we're going to move the decimal 2 to the left because this is a small number. So 0, 8, 1 seconds. You would have to use this number in your formula. Um, now, if something isn't in seconds, so say it was in milliseconds, for example, 9.2 milliseconds. I can't put 9.2 into the formula because it's not in seconds. So going to the chart or memorizing, milli is 10 to the negative third. So now we're going to use a chart. You should have seen this before. I know that one second, sorry, that's not the way I want to do this. 9.2 milliseconds is equivalent to 9.2. I can take this milli and replace it with 10 to the negative third times 10 to the negative third seconds. So the only thing that changed in this is that instead of writing the prefix milli, I'm writing times 10 to the negative third seconds. Or, another way to look at it is if you don't like this, I know that one millisecond is 10 to the negative third seconds. So, if you notice, the one is always going to go with the prefix, and the 10 to the power is going to go with the base unit. So, to get rid of milliseconds, if milliseconds is on top, I'm going to put one millisecond in the bottom, 10 to the negative third seconds on top. And multiplying straight across, we get 9.2 times 10 to the negative third. The units for milliseconds cancel, and dividing by 1 leaves me with the same thing. So we get the same answer. So you can either think of it as replacing the prefix with the power, or you can do a conversion. I'll do another example. So say that we have 12.2 terameters. So T stands for tera, M stands for meters. Um, I could recognize that this is 12.2 times 10. Tera is 10 to the 12th meters. And so now we're at our base unit. The other way that you could do this is that 1 terameter is equivalent to 10 to the 12th meters. So setting this up, put what you start with in this box, then put your conversion, so terameter is on top, I need to put terameter in the bottom, terameters will cancel, and you get 12.2 times 10 to the 12th meters. Now, some of you may be saying, well, this is totally unnecessary. Why are we using this unit conversion analysis box thing? And I know you've seen this before in chemistry. The reason why is that you may not always be converting to your base unit. So it's pretty easy when you're going from a prefix to your base unit. You can just put the power there. But what if I wanted to convert from terameters to 
micrometers, for instance. That's not quite as easy. So now let's say I have um, 25 microseconds, so I want you to get used to seeing this. And I want to convert this to, let's see, uh, a kilosecond. So this is a bizarre unit. You won't really ever see that unit. But if I wanted to go from microseconds to kiloseconds, it's probably easy for, easier for you to go to seconds first and then to kiloseconds. So we're going to start with 25 microseconds. And we're going to go to seconds. Now I know that one microsecond is equivalent to 10 to the negative 6 seconds. So again, 1 goes with the prefix, 10 to the power goes with the base unit. So if microseconds is on top, I want to cancel that out. I'm going to put it in the bottom. And 10 to the negative 6 goes up top. So I've canceled microseconds and I've gone to seconds. Now to finish it, I need to go from seconds to kiloseconds. Well, I know that, again, the 1 goes with the 1 with the prefix. 1 kilosecond is equivalent to 10. Kilo is 10 to the third seconds. So now I have to be careful where to put which one. We have to figure out which goes on top, which goes on bottom. If seconds is up top, I want to cancel seconds. So seconds is going to go on the bottom. So on the bottom, I'm going to put 10 to the third seconds. Up top, 1 kilosecond. Seconds will cancel. And now I have only kiloseconds left. And up top we get 25 times 10 to the negative 6. And on the bottom we have a 10 to the third. So you divide it by 10 to the third kiloseconds. Now remember, when we divide by an exponent, we want to subtract. So negative 6 minus 3 is negative 9. So this is really 25 times 10 to the negative 9 kiloseconds. Well, we're still not in scientific notation because we want the decimal here. So this would be 2.5. If I took away a decimal place here, that means I need to add 1 here. Adding to a negative, this becomes 10 to the negative 8th kiloseconds. Or if you struggle with that, you could rewrite this whole decimal out and figure out how many places it would go. We won't be doing a ton of this, but you will see this, so you'll need to be able to deal with unit conversions. Uh, some of you may feel comfortable at this point. Uh, you're welcome to, I guess, stop watching at this point. I'm going to do another example like this for those that may need to see another example. So again, just to practice our prefixes, G stands for giga, um, and P stands for pico. These are meters. We're going to go from gigameters to picometers. So we have to go through meters to do that. So start with gigameters. Sorry for the crooked line. We know that one gigameter is 10 giga hopefully you remember, is 10 to the ninth meters. The 1 goes with the prefix, the 10 to the power goes with the base unit. I want to cancel gigameters, so gigameters goes in the bottom, and meters goes up top. Okay, canceled gigameters. Now we're at meters. Now we need to go to picometers. Well, I know that 1 
picometer, again, remember 1 goes with the prefix, pico is 10 to the negative 12th. And now I have to figure out where things go. If meters is up top now, I want meters to cancel, so this has to go on the bottom. So the meters will cancel, and I'm left with picometers, which is what I want. So if I were to multiply this out, so remember the chart means multiply all the numerators together and all the denominators together and then divide, you get 3.17 times 10 to the 9th divided by 10 to the negative 12th. Now remember what happens when we divide by this power. I'm going to take this exponent 9 and subtract this exponent negative 12. Subtracting a negative means adding. So this is 3.17 times 10. 9 minus negative 12 is positive 21. And I forgot my unit. Well, all these cancel, my unit is picometers. All right. So uh, tomorrow you'll have some practice on scientific notation. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.